<laughs> so is this is this your is this your first one, Ben? This is the first one. Yeah. Oh, at, man. At <laughs> I feel so I feel so honored. It'll be cool. All right. Well, um so the format since like we're just starting off, it's just gonna be a conversation. But first off, I mean this is for listeners, so we kind of have to talk to an audience. But I wanna just ask you a question, Chaz, who who are you and what are you doing right now? Okay. Um I'm Chaz Walgamot. I'm a, a designer, illustrator, and animator. Um, and I am second half of Gnarly Wall, a creative agency. Myself and Sam Welker, we recently partnered up to start a little creative studio. And Think Particle is a, is a part of that. But uh, so yeah, my role in that is I'm basically just a, a creative dir- director. Well, more like an art director than a creative director, um, and just like an owner in the business. So. Nice. So for I guess the the listeners, Sam or um, I met Chaz at the meetup, uh, the Salt Lake Motion Graphic meetup when we were meeting up regularly. And super impressed by his work. He's probably one of the most talented motion designers that I know. And he's also one of the most real people I know. So we've had many, many conversations that have gone on for hours. And um, it's rare that you find... Sometimes too real. Yeah. (laughs) Sometimes too real. (laughs) We get out of the conversation and think, wow, we just wasted half of the day talking to each other. And now we have to go back to work. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. If my wife sees that that I'm on the phone with Dan, she's like, "All right." She just checks out for for hours because she knows it's going to be a while. <laughs> but one thing I am so grateful for Chaz is we had the opportunity to share an office space for a couple months, and just the the mere fact of just ob- observing how he worked and the close attention to detail that he puts in his work. Uh, illustration and animation and art, it taught me so much. It taught me more than reading books or looking at tutorials. And so I think I've thanked you for it, Chaz, but uh, thank you again. (laughs) (laughs) You have, and I I appreciate that, man. It was a blast working with you. It was fun. So talk to me about, I guess, what, what is important right now going on in your life? What are you trying to do? With work, um, let's just talk about work. All right. I just realized that I, I so I'm driving right now for the <laughs> for the listeners. I just pulled away from an intersection. So you might hear my sweet sweet minivan revving up. But uh, <laughs> uh, I was just self conscious of the sound I'm making. Sorry. Ask the question again. Well, I I, I just had a new question. Tell us where you're from. You okay. live in yeah. So live in Utah. Um, I'm from uh, like West Valley Magna area where I grew up in Utah. And currently I live in Tooele. Uh, so way out in the boonies. Um, yeah. Born in Idaho, but I only lived there for a couple months. <laughs> so I don't remember it. And for with Gnarly Walls, you and Sam just started this company, or you guys just teamed up how long ago? A month ago? About a month ago, yeah. Maybe a little over a month. Um, and be- and it, before that, what were you doing? Uh, like, how how did you get your whole start in the motion graphic industry? Um, yeah, good question. I became a freelancer in the motion graphics industry after – being a designer for a few years. Um, let me let me back up. So I was a, in high school. I was uh, I saw myself more in a traditional art kind of realm. Um, I was really fascinated by oil painting and and illustration. Um, and but I had zero confidence that you could ever make a living in the art industry. Um, so. 
I don't know. Like that was my dream, but I didn't think it was actually possible. Um, and I, I also didn't know if you had to go to college because I was terrible in school. And uh, if I thought if, if I have to go to college in order to do this, then there's no way <laughs> I won't make it. Um, anyway, I was fortunate enough to get uh, uh, like a uh, work for free opportunity at like a local theater. Uh, so I, I designed all their their posters for this playhouse, and I designed their sets, and I built their sets. And so that was like my really my first opportunity working with a client. Um, and so that was just a really awesome way to build up my portfolio. Um, I've, with that portfolio I had from the from the theater, I was able to get a design job uh, at an athletic apparel company, uh, which was surprising to me because I had never even opened Illustrator before. Um, and like everything we were doing for the most part was in Illustrator. So they <laughs> took a they took a chance on me and and like taught me the ropes to, of design and and uh Illustrator and yeah. Learned from uh my mentor uh J D Hawkins, who's a fantastic illustrator and designer. And and as well as Brad Marimoto, who was my creative director. Um awesome guys to learn from and we started dabbling uh, at Game Gear was the company uh, the athletic apparel company we started dabbling a little bit into motion um, you know just we had some cool projects and we're like oh it'd be sweet if this is moving so I was like, oh, I'll go figure it out and so all my motion experience actually started in Photoshop because that's what I you know I had never used After Effects uh, we started to um, from these um, like sports photo shoots we were doing, um, so I, I started filming like debris and particles, like actually with like a camera instead of building it in the computer. And uh, and then with these photos we were taking, we were like making it look like people were running through um, running a race or something, and it was a still shot, but all these particles were flying around them. And, and their their clothes were like billowing in the wind, um, and it was a gift, so it just it just looped for forever. Um, and I thought that was really fun, and I started to get some some uh, attraction on like Behance on my portfolio for for that work in particular, um, which got me super excited and fascinated with motion graphics and. Uh, I felt like I had enough attention and interest in in more work like that that I was I just made the plunge and and quit that job and started a little freelance career uh, doing motion graphics and design. Um, that's kind of that was my pathway into the industry. I so what when when did you make that leap to freelance? What year was um, it? What year? Ah, man, I'm bad at dates. Let's see. 2014? Uh, was it prior than that? No, 2014 sounds about right. Yeah, because I... Um, 2011... The end of 2011 was the year I started my design job. I worked there for about two years, and then I and then I left to go freelance. So, um, yeah, 2014, probably. And those... Those gifts are still on your Behance portfolio, correct? Uh, no, they're not. <laughs> uh, uh, they were. For, I thought there was there was while. there was one guy. You know, he looked like he was running or finishing a race, right? And his uh-huh. shirt was blowing in the wind. Yeah, yeah, I had that one in yeah. for a long time. I think it's still probably yeah. on my dribble, but I only have like two or three posts on my dribble. <laughs> I don't, I don't keep up on dribble. What is your Behance name? It's just Chaz, all capitals, right? Um, it used to be Chaz, all capitals. Um, so if you type in Chaz Walgamot, it would it would come up. But we recently just switched my Behance over to the Gnarly Walls Behance. So <laughs> you're not gotcha. going to find me on Behance. Uh, but a lot of my work is still there um, under Gnarly Walls. 
Ozzy. Gnarly no. Walls. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I'll send a link. A... I'll send yeah, a cool. link so people can check it out. Yeah. Okay. Now, it's, I'm telling the listeners if there is a motion artist to follow in the Salt Lake area, but I almost want to say the world. If you just want to follow a good <laughs> artist, Ch- Chaz Walgamot is one of those. Um, <laughs> Chaz, you taught me a, a very important lesson, I think, that I now have ingrained in me. And that is that what I kind of interpreted it was, it's not so much the plugin or the software that makes the artist, but and you don't have to look for kind of a certain technique. It's more of just um, almost thinking everything is possible and then finding the way to create it. Does that sound familiar right. to you? Can yeah, you explain absolutely. kind of that? Can you explain that philosophy? Because I know for may, maybe listeners, they, they're thinking, what kind of plugin should I use? How do I do this? But when you taught me that and you kind of showed me an example of it, and I saw you even do frame by frame animation. So if you could, if there was no plugin to use or tool to help you, you would actually do it frame by frame. And it just opened my mind to possibilities and it enhanced, I think it enhanced my work. So can you just talk a little bit about your philosophy with that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that reminded me, you were, talk, you were talking about kind of frame-by-frame frame animation. I, I suppose I, I left that part out of my my entry into the industry. Uh, I left that out. Um, so before my design job, I did do a couple semesters just at the community college. Uh, for traditional animation, which kind of gave me a foundation of of uh, animation and illustration, uh, some of the like animation principles. And it just reminded me of that, so I want to throw that in. But uh, to go back to your question, um, yeah, I think I think uh, you know coming to this industry from a more traditional art background. Uh, I mean, like I mentioned, being an oil painter was like what I saw myself doing um, when I was in high school, what I was passionate about. Um, and a lesson that I, I learned from my art teacher just in high school, um, there was an artist that was that was pretty good in our in our art class. Um, and she she did um, these animal paintings and these landscape paintings and she was she was stressing out because she could not find her like fan brush. Um, and that's how she does trees is with her fan brush. Uh, she has, a, she has like a, a, a technique she follows using, using the fan brush, which I think I've seen like Bob Ross do, for example, he's got all sorts of techniques um, and little tricks. And I think perhaps she learned it from Bob Ross. I'm not sure. But my, my teacher's response I thought was, was fascinating. She said, don't be so technique And that's the word she used, which was kind of silly. But uh, she said, you can paint a, a tree with, with anything. You can paint a tree with your finger, a uh, palette knife, uh, a big fat brush, you know, a tiny, tiny brush. Um, you know, it's, it's just shapes and values. Um, and that's all it is. You don't, you don't need a specific kind of brush. So I thought that was interesting. I I ended up doing, kind of from that conversation, I ended up doing this really big painting all with my palette knife because I had never never tried that. And I was like, okay, if you can really paint with anything, I'll just use the palette knife, which is like the knife you use to mix your (laughs) colors. And it ended up with like a really crazy, awesome result. Like it was super textured, way different than what you're used to seeing in a painting, Uh, at least what, what what I was used to seeing in a painting at the time. Um, and that that painting um, did really well in uh, the like the district art show. It took best of show, and I got a, a scholarship from that to go to a community college. <laughs> Which, wow. yeah, I don't wow. know if that's saying much, <laughs> but it was cool. Yeah, um, and that's beside the point. But um, I think I've I've kind of taken that philosophy into motion graphics. And thought about it the same way. There's a million ways to skin a cat, and when you're when you're doing art, even in the computer, uh, it's the same way. Um, and I think 
um, that's kind of it's what makes things interesting is when um, you can see that the process is is an unusual process because you kind of your process kind of shows up in your work um, and at least for other motion guys like they um, they can tell if you did it a different way and uh, it's it's fascinating but I'm I used to be really against plugins <laughs> and I, in, kind of, in a really like arrogant and stupid cocky way. Um, I was against a, against a lot of things. Like I, I never went to, I still haven't really, but I've never gone to like motionographer or like video co-pilot, um, <laughs> which is like, you know, like a great entry into this, this industry. And I just like, I had such a, you know, I'm forging my own path, which is really pretty dumb. But I've I've really come around to uh, using more plugins because they're just tools, right? You you have this toolbox, but I think I think you use them intentionally. And and I'll say the same thing with tutorials. Um, you know, if you watch a tutorial, let's say you watch a, a video co-pilot tutorial, um, he's going to teach you a way to do something. Um, but the point of that is not to just be able to reproduce what he's teaching you. Like it's to take those principles and apply it in a whole new way. Like, oh, wow. I bet I had never seen the liquify tool or whatever, you know, whatever he's going to show you and then figure out how to rescan it and, and put it in your work in an interesting way. Um, right. That's, that's something I'm big on as well. Um, well, I'm going rambling. with your, oh, sorry, but going with uh, kind of things are tools instead of instead of like the be, end all be all. I think I learned. I um one time I saw a video of Kelly Slater surfing a wave on a door. He used a <laughs> door as his surfboard, and he he surfed that wave better than any wave I could ever surf in my entire life. And he was on a door. <laughs> That's and uh, and I have multiple conversations with people about skiing, and they always ask me, you know, what skis should I buy? And I always tell them, the skis don't make the skier. The skier makes the skis. And yeah. so I think that same principle can be applied to any tool related to animation. And I think what you were saying kind of relates back to the whole After Effects versus cinema. I remember when... We started the meetup group in 2014. I was really self-conscious because I didn't know how to use cinema, and it seemed like that was the big thing. Everybody was using it. Sure. And I think if you – now I realize that all these things are tools. So After Effects, Cinema 4D, if they can help you produce the image or the animation that you want, that's their purpose. It's not so much Absolutely. of if you if you use cinema, you're going to be fantastic, or if you use After Effects, you're going to be fantastic. I think it's your imagination, it's what you want to create, and then those are tools to create it. One hundred percent. Very well said. Um, I, I think the say I had the same egotistical uh, view on on cinema um, was the, just that you know I I can. I can make something look 3D, even though it's even though it's not actually 3D, and uh, I don't need the crutch of Cinema 4D. So <laughs> 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 no, stupid. Um, but really, I mean, I've been blown away by some of the things that I've seen come out of out of cinema. Um, even stuff that I would have believed was two dimensional. Um, so it really is an incredible tool, incredibly powerful. And I'm only now starting to like learn cinema and, and get over myself a little bit. Um, Sam, uh, my business partner is helping me with that. <laughs> He's calling me to repentance. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing my very first project in cinema and it is, it is amazingly powerful uh, and how forgiving it is. And, um, I don't know. Yeah. Can you talk to us about, um, I guess briefly? Oh, and make sure I guess like make sure your 
you're speaking directly to your phone because I think sometimes it's a little bit muffled. Um, okay. Or, or uh, there you go. It sounds a little bit louder now. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Um, can you talk to us about animation and the animation principles that you got introduced to in school and that you apply today? Because I think those animation principles, if people pay attention to them and then they know how to apply them in their work, whether it be through the graph editor or something else, just you know, timing, anticipation, follow through, all that stuff. Can you talk a little bit about those animation principles, like how you maybe learn them or where people can learn them? Sure. Um, I'm I'm far from a from an expert uh, in animation principles, but yeah, like you mentioned, timing uh, is is so important. Anticipation. So, well, let me talk about where I I learned them first, and we can dive into them. But um, um, so I mean, yeah, college was was uh, a big help. Our our Bible was. Uh, our animation Bible was um, this animator survival kit, as well as the illusion of life. Um, both great books. And I think one of the biggest helps for me was um, having my teacher pull up like a cartoon um, or an old Disney movie. And we would freeze frame like on a on an interesting shot he wanted to teach us about and he would go frame by frame um nice. and he would talk about key poses and clear silhouettes and characters um which is huge something i am still i still struggle with but i think it's it's worth like um what's the word obsessing over those over key clear poses yes. um and then I, I, so I took that idea of like freeze framing and going frame by frame. Um, and like I went and watched Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends or something on Cartoon Network and would, would, if I saw crazy, you know, how a character would move in a really interesting way, maybe they move really fast and they, they smear out, you know, what does that look like when you break it down? So I'd go frame by frame. Um, I'd record it. My parents had a DVR and so I'd, you know, record it or whatever, and then go frame by frame. And those smear frames, I just fell in love with. Like if a character's <laughs> moving really fast, and instead of motion blur, they just draw the character really like exaggerated and 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 wonky to like right. give the illusion of motion blur. Um, right. I just I fell in love with that. So that's something I definitely try to incorporate into my work. Um, but so yes, smearing. Um, second, I'm really big on on secondary motion. I feel like, or overlapping motion. I think that is, it really enhances the feeling of, of animation, and uh, anticipation, which is like, the movement or the action that happens before the main action. A lot of times we just jump straight into that main action, and there's nothing that leads us into that action. And it right. can feel a little robotic and and empty of of life and um yeah I mean those are those are kind of some of the things that I'm big on I know there's there's a lot more but well, no um, that's that's great I think I think there's so there's tools in After Effects like Ease and Wiz and I know a lot of After Effects designers um they wrote like I know I relied on Ease and Wiz for my easing a lot and then when I dove into the graph editor and I was able to manipulate the points and practice like the anticipation, like the movement before the actual movement or the overlapping that you're talking about, the oscillation and everything that really changed my work. And so I thought, I thought those like, I'm, I'm, I'm far from an expert and I think, but just like the learning those animation principles helps your work so much i think it's amazing it does it just it, it starts to feel it starts to feel right you know and that's that's um, the, that's the the word feel when you when your animations feel right and you can watch it over and over and over again and you love it i think that's when you know that you nailed it yeah absolutely and ease and wiz is a, is a really powerful tool um 
and it can in, like it can make your workflow go <laughs> way quicker. I think. Sure. Hey, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I used it a while ago. Um, I'm trying to remember. Does it, it? It doesn't really allow you to keyframe anymore, right? Because it it uh, no. It, it doesn't allow you to keyframe anymore. No, it's all it's all code based. It's all code based, and I think you know not having that level of control was driving me insane. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's it's there's still a ton you can do with it, and you can you can still build in uh, anticipation um, using those tools, but um, it's it's a little bit trickier. So I I don't know right. for me just knowing how to keyframe that um, and the the velocity numbers and and things to type in to obtain that it just it seems a little quicker and I have more control that way. So we have probably like four minutes left or maybe even three minutes. Um, okay. There's so much we could talk about and I like you said we could probably talk for three hours maybe all day if we really wanted oh, to. Yeah. Um. So, I, there's either two subjects I want to talk about. There's actually one that comes to mind, and it's um. So we can either talk about your business, kind of, or I think the subject of we've talked about attitude or kind of that edginess that work that we appreciate has. Um. Okay. Yeah. So in my work, so I have a huge appreciation from for something that's edgy, and I think it derives from my background of freestyle skiing, skateboarding, even breakdancing when I was younger, that mm. whole freestyle hip-hop scene and how yeah. edgy it was. And that influences my work. Not It doesn't influence my work. It influences my appreciation because I feel like my work a lot of times is directed by a client and so I have to make it kind of corporate safe. Um, but I've noticed in your work you do you do express edginess and you have that same appreciation. Can you describe for me how you got that appreciation? Sure. Um yeah, I <laughs> edginess is a is a word that like makes me cringe. I don't know, it feels it doesn't feel right to me, but it sure. but I can't think of a better word to explain what that is. Um Right. Yeah, just like a sense of like youthfulness and like um kind of what's current in uh in in the like trends, I suppose. Um, but I, I, I think what you said, uh, as far as like action sports being an influence, it's definitely been, um, an influence in my life. Like I was obsessed with BMX, um, growing up and I rode a little bit of BMX. I was definitely like a poser. Like I loved watching the X games and I knew, <laughs> I knew all of the tricks, you know, um, and like I had the the action figures on the BMX uh, bikes, and I have my my parents have kept all this. I have I honestly probably have thousands of dollars worth of like tech decks and like tech deck ramps. <laughs> um, and now my my kid my kids go to grandma's house and play with them, and my nephew goes and plays. And it's really fun. Um, but I had like I had a lawn mowing job, and that's what every dime went towards was. Um, those tech decks, that, which were like I I was obsessed with, but it was awesome because that's really what jump started um, my career as well. Like I started making stop motion animation with those those action figures jumping these jumps, and so I was paying so much attention to like, okay, how does how does their body move? You know, if he's going to do a turn down or a uh, you know backflip, like how does he? Um, get that rotation down like and I started like obsessing over just watching the X games and like obs observing how they do that and then I'd go animate it uh stop motion and I mean they're they're terrible but I've from a very young age I was observing that um which I think is <laughs> uh in an in a really cool way like inspired my career path um but yeah they, I I think that comes from that kind of world is like wanting to be in skateboard culture and um hanging out at the skate park and um all that stuff 
it's just it's just it's just what I like, and like going to punk shows. And I was in a punk band, and um, not a great punk band, but it was fun. And uh, I think I think it's huge yeah. to rely on your background, or to draw from your background. I think that has a huge influence. I think sometimes, especially starting out. One, it's hard to express yourself, but two, sometimes you get caught up in what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. And so I almost think being true to yourself is is refreshing to see in other people's work. And it doesn't have to be an action sports background. It can be something no. else. But, totally. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a great point. Um, I've been listening to this podcast, The Creative Pep Talk, um, by... Uh, Andy J. Pizza is what he calls himself. <laughs> it's a, I love the podcast. It's silly, but it's it's awesome. Um, and he he recently had an interview. Um, well, he's he's big on he's big on like kind of discovering your voice. And you, so I I I felt like okay, if I were to make personal work instead of client work, like what would I do? I don't even know what I would do. I've been making client work for so long that I don't even know what I like. Um, and so I had this like big exploration process where I went into Pinterest and was just like, okay, what, what do I gravitate towards? And I, I didn't feel like it had a whole lot of, um, it didn't really help that much. I didn't, I still felt just lo as lost as, as ever, but mm -hmm. he then started talking about like going into your, your childhood, like mm, yeah. just clear, unadulterated, like, what were you into? Like I was into ninjas and I was into BMX. Like that. That's what I was into. Uh, and, and and Weezer. I loved Weezer. Um, so, and I found I've recently been working on this on this project where a character is riding a BMX bike, and I've just I felt like at home animating that and like developing that. <laughs> and and I also did a recent project for my buddy uh, who rides motorcycles. So I animated this motorcycle guy, uh, like popping a wheelie. And I again I felt like. I'm home. Like I know how to animate this and it's so fun for me. And I've re I'm realizing that that influence from my childhood uh, can really do a lot in my own personal work. Um, and, and something just to, to kind of close that off is um, he was doing another, he was doing an interview with um, this lady and I can't remember her name, but she's a typographer. One of his most recent episodes. Um, she does like, three-dimensional types so like with shoelaces and food and stuff um and she said something that i found interesting like your creative voice or i don't remember how she said it but uh your creative voice or like what makes you interesting is not that you're a typographer or an animator it's like it's your an, you're an animator and something else like once you attach one more thing to it then you become yeah. really interesting like She's oh, okay. a typographer yeah. and a food typographer. Um, and now that's interesting. Like that's a little bit more unique. So if I'm an animator and specifically like I animate guys on BMX bikes or a skier uh, or I kind of live in that world, like that makes me unique and, and kind of starts to create sort of a personal brand. And um, yeah. Cool. Um I forgot what I was going to say, but Chaz, thank you so much for your time. And um, you've you've been such a, a good influence and a good friend to not only me, but a lot of people, um, just a lot of people and a lot of motionographers around the Salt Lake area, especially. So thanks for your time. For doing You're this. welcome, man. Uh, yeah. I'm that was really kind of you to say this has been super fun. I've enjoyed this conversation. I, I don't feel like this <laughs> conversation has been much different, if different at all from like every other conversation we have, like no. this is the kind of stuff we <laughs> always talk about. So it's very easy, very natural. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I hope cool. that somebody can get something out of that. Uh, if not, I, oh well. <laughs> I, think they, I think they will. And I just want to, for everybody listening, um, follow Chaz. And he's a good person to follow. Check out what Gnarly Walls is up to, what they're up to. And Chaz, I hope you get to tell your story more. Um, I think you have a lot to offer to everybody. So I appreciate cool. that.